well, there's nothing wrong with your vision. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> well, um, because Horst yesterday announced a surprise guest, and <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and I am here today and have brought along Arto Watzniak of uh, Vago and this um, certain Mr. Huber who's always standing about the place. Watch out, when he massages, he always distributes uh, tasks, special tasks. So don't have him bring you a cup of coffee. We want to talk about thinking print digitally today again. And uh, we heard this in the various other lectures today. Unfortunately, you can only listen to an extract, but those I listen to. Uh, Ulrich, I would have liked to have you with me because I, I talked a lot about your topics. So we talked about many different topics, but what they all have in common is that this digital thinking has many facets to it. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> Yeah, um, and this means that uh, today we will be talking about facet catalogs. Let's briefly start. Well, everybody knows uh, Austin and myself, but Artur, tell us who you are and why you have to be, be standing here. Yeah, sure. My name is uh, Artur Watzinger Feldmeier. I'm th from the Vago company, and there I am responsible for all things related to product information from data modeling and translation um, and to the uh, export to all of the channels. Although we don't speak about channels, we think digitally in digital terms and all of the uh, uh, product automation or catalog automation because we're not speaking of paper here necessarily. May I actually um, hit you with a hard question? What is a facet catalog? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm used to that when uh, being interviewed by you. Uh, in my personal words, this is a dream came true of an IT person and an engineer, the IT guy who only thinks in terms of rules and the engineer who is uh, as lazy as a dog and wants to stay away from manual work and wants to have everything in reiterative processes. At the end of the day, it is a consistently rules-based catalog structure. And uh, I had this, an inspiration this morning when I heard that uh, somebody said, uh, we simply f uh, left out the list of contents. What we do is we define these lists of contents with rules and the rest is done by the machine, so to speak. So these facets could be imagined roughly like a contents tree that uh, lays down the rules of how to structure the catalog and how the catalogs should be entered um, and, and the sequence results from this, yeah, based on, on the uh, facets or the characteristics. What is your view? How would you, Horst, uh, this is the engineering view, well, actually, actually, I thought uh, that uh, Artur would uh, be uh, speaking about the business version, and I would actually cover the engineering part of it. But now I have to improvise. But oh, how, whoa, whoa. Uh, in one sentence, a facet catalog is a manifested click path of a website. Basically, like in an online shop, a web shop, where I say when's where um, trousers half long or a little longer. Um, we've known this from e commerce for quite a while, but uh, provocatively asking, what is the innovation about this? The innovation. Uh, the path, this is absolutely right. Um, our titles on the pages are nothing but a breadcrumb navigation that actually results from this fetishing in a fully automatic way. The innovation about it is that uh, like a facet search um, uh, is easy to handle, to maintain, and the efforts to maintain the data to a minimum is reduced to a minimum. And I only have to strategic look at the topics. How do I sort products? What are their characteristics? What are their facets? And um, this, the name was uh, our creative inspiration. 
on the one hand, um, it is this association with the simplicity of a search engine, the facet search, and on the other hand, it is also uh, the, um, the differences uh, between the products. I had this question this morning, how do you get started? How do you approach it? I first have to take a look at my products because I manually, I used to build my catalog manually and I build it in a specific order according to groups and at times I don't even know why I do this. The knowledge is somewhere between the ears but it's not saved in a database. And my with the facet approach, I want to know this uh, knowledge to define the rules and this is why I need the facets, the characteristics. So I primarily look at the products, at the uh, um, commonalities and uh, the differences and what's relevant for the customer. And since the effort is so minimal, I could even say, well, I'll try this version, I'll try that version, that version. Uh, Andreas at the back, we had a brief um, to condense one catalog and we had different ideas about it. And I said, well, facet it, one, two, three, print it out in PDF format, and then we'll look at the results. And with the facet approach, this is relatively easy to do. This sounds uh, quite abstract. Um, you, uh, well, I was also involved in this uh, project in a consulting capacity, then handed over to Haas because we didn't have the facets yet. And we said before, Laudert and Haas have to exchange constantly um, and actually um, stretch the implementation uh, period uh, um, uh, to the extreme. I handed over the project to Horst. It sounds abstract. Um, you're still working with the print suite components, um, the components that everybody else uses. Of course, extended with facets, but in practical terms, what is different compared to the classical catalog production? What is different about your faceted approach? Well, maybe a thought experiment. Assume uh, th there's some uh, geometrical shapes, uh, triangles, circles, squares, and now for a specific customer, we want to compile the triangles and the squares. These shapes, apart from the concha, they also have a color and they're either, either filled with color or there's just a concha to them. You can now define, I want to have triangles and circles first, so I define a filter. I only want to have circles and triangles, but you need a product list. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this is like an assortment, like uh, with um, uh, on a search page through the facets, I define what is my assortment. Now I have this heap of uh, triangles and circles and all sorts of colors and I have to sort them out to have a proper order in my catalog. So next I define the uh, properties I want to sort next. So I say I go for the shape first and I say a grouping must have an order, so first all of the circles in all colors and then the triangles in all of the colors. But now within the groups uh, everything is untidy because I have different colors and different conchers. Yet yeah, now? Just briefly to add during the process, do you only see the characteristic for faceting that uh, represents this group, right? Well, we have a set. At the end of the day, all of the technical data assigned to the article can be faceted. But you only see the ones that are left in the group. Yeah, this is, this is attached. Yeah, you see the articles. First, the clams, the ones for DIY, with, with rail, without a rail. Exactly, yes. And the triangles and circles, within the triangles you'd say, I'll group it by colors, so all of the blue ones together, the green ones, all the red ones in one group. And then within the colors, I have this uh, characteristic of full color or concha, then I actually create an order and I say the full ones first and then the ones with the concha only come next. And all of a sudden I have an order created in a loose assortment. And now to these assignment, um, to 
these uh, characteristics, I assign uh, rules or control rules. If a color changes, a new page is generated or a new column on the page or uh, in the column, subgroups are to be created. And with this simple method, it is uh, easily possible to use just a few definitions. In our first catalog, it was 20 of these grouping definitions only. And from scratch, we were able to generate 500 pages. Maybe if I, I may add, the classical way with a PIM and the database publishing solution, the name is different in all PIMS, this is different, this is a catalog, this is an export structure, this is a channel or whatever. So you first define which data you want to have for such a catalog, you structure this data and um, introduce it into a hierarchy. Um, moving away from the technical example now, well let's say we're selling fashion, let's say we distinguish between men's wear, men, women's wear and children's wear. This is relatively obvious. And then we say, let's then distinguish uh, for women's wear uh, between dresses, shoes, and so on. And under shoes, we've probably got the high heels and the comfy shoes. This would be a relatively natural um, uh, merchandise group structure. And PIM, you do, do it with an export structure. And then you push in the products and under the products, you've got the articles. And this um, is then linked in the print suite and then the pages are exported accordingly. Yeah, you still with me? Oh, yeah. But now the facet approach and this is the innovation, the radical uh, innovations like the airplane. But this is not a radical innovation. Um, there are also innovations when a thought concept just transfer to another uh, context. So how do customers do it in digital channels? You can look at the Vago webshop and, uh, and you can look at the Zalanda webshop that I've just described. They work the same way. You select an area, uh, yeah, you select a category at Vago, um, and then I have this filter list, usually left, top left. The, then I filter the content and I look for shoes, maybe for the size and then the height of the heel. And this exactly is um, to um, uh, do it uh, and to transfer it to the print catalog, the way that users search a digital catalog. Digital is target group oriented and now the decisive point is, well, knowing that my target group, uh, we're talking about personalization, our target group buys uh, color oriented. They buy by color. So I say a festive uh, evening event and red. Then I say, well, I need uh, red dresses, I need red shoes, and probably a matching, uh, ma matching accessories. Uh, this is a completely different hierarchy. And a bag. Oh, if I got this. <laughs> Thank you. But you are married, aren't you? Even happily. So am I. I'm just praying that my wife is not listening now. <laughs> and uh, uh, normally what you would do in a classical approach, you would go to the PIN system, actually create a new export structure. This sounds like a lot of work, and it is. But then add uh, to this that there are new articles added. So all of these structures, uh, so you would have to rearrange. And this is the difference. You define the rule once and uh, the difference in the sprint suite is that uh, we're not planning the concrete products. I'm not saying I want uh, this structure with evening dresses. I plan the rules. 
and uh, this results in the structure and then the rest is the same. The only technical difference is uh, that uh, I do not plan the concrete products, but the rules, the underlying rules that result in the products. This is the big difference. And furthermore, that you do everything with uh, what you have in terms of information about the products. Regarding data models, I'm looking at Michael Giesen now. Everybody implementing PIM projects, especially in the industrial area or in technical articles, lives with concerns. We're talking about uh, products with uh, several thousands of characteristics. The fashion is uh, difficult, but when I look at the complexity of data, then technical uh, products, um, it takes an engineer to, un to understand what three quarters of the attributes mean. And the beauty about it is that uh, what uh, actually looks uh, like an obstacle first can be used as a tool. Now I uh, focus on the uh, characteristics because uh, I want to have the DIY clamps first because I can sell those best and then for the other products. What I'm interested to know, um, I, I didn't uh, see this because I was no longer involved in the project. When you plan based on facets and uh, have the advantage that new products uh, end up there uh, automatically, what are the differences in the implementation? Well, the implementation of the templates that you're referring to is uh, just like... Um, forming templates on PIM structures. The templates uh, work slightly differently, but in terms of complexity, they're not uh, bigger. They're fle more flexible to use, rather, and um, uh, there is another effect, uh, and you can add to this or correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, very often a catalog page um, features redundant information. There's uh, something up there in the heading, then in the description, and in the table there's the same information. Mm -hmm. well, actually, the attribute is the top, then, then there's a version in the middle, and whoops, uh, it's also featured in a table. And at times it was only described in the text. Well, This is no longer so. We say we have our hierarchy now. And Art already mentioned this. At the top, we had the uh, breadcrumb, the click path, and the underlying attributes. Because, and as we're looking, uh, filtered for the color red, you will probably f only find a red clamp at the bottom. Uh, at the top. But at the bottom, we no longer have to say this, because we're talking about red clamps. And this is uh, the difference when you look at the layouts. The uh, question in the template definition is different, whether the attribute is red at the top or maybe above the table because all of the articles that have been faceted are red, then I don't have to include a column for this. This uh, logic where the attribute is featured or shown is actually decided by the template autonomously. And this is a big difference uh, in itself. Uh, look at content server. Uh, is anybody uh, working with uh, content server's flex tables? One, just one person? Well, you have to smile, you have to look happy. <laughs> Yeah, it's a table configurator. And there you select which attributes are shown in the table. This is no longer needed when you take the uh, facet approach because the template decides when you configure a table and I want to have the attribute red, but when I work with a different hierarchy, then it no longer makes sense. So it's a new way of thinking, another way of thinking about templates. They're more dynamic.
but in reverse this also means um, we uh, did workshops initially about this to see which types of attributes uh, are to be shown horizontally vertically or crisscross this is the question that always crops up when I want to know uh, how to put together the tables which is easier for fashion because it is pre pretty clear what uh, shoppers are interested in but the, this page is pre-filled because I know I have priorities for the individual pro uh, attributes and I take these in the same order and I know which ones to find in the categories up there. So there's less effort involved uh, in putting together tables. Do I remember correctly that for the remaining attributes you have laid down an order, a sequence, and then the tables are built uh, for the number of attributes? Yes, we uh, agreed on this centrally once and it's simple to maintain and is then redundantly used wherever needed. Uh, let me add on the templates. Um, what do you need to be considered are the overflow rules. Here you probably have to introduce some logic when you have a standard makeup of a catalog um, uh, that you start as a design, then there are certain f configurations and you might say, oh, that'll fit. But never forget, um, there can be different combinations very quickly. And then I have to lay down overflow rules so that it always works out properly at the end of the day. This is maybe the difference, especially when um, uh, come from a catalog uh, approach uh, that uh, was based on pages and double pages um, saying uh, well we can actually squeeze in five wheel trolleys and it'll fit or they will fit this is a, a, a fundamental change of culture yeah, this was uh, one of the resistances we had to overcome. I know that one of the principal concerns at Vago was that the uh, distribution guys uh, use the catalog. The uh, catalog was structured based on the know-how going back on decades, and the uh, distribution colleagues uh, use this catalog uh, as as a bible to actually plan sales activities, but also for onboarding new colleagues uh, when they had to explain anything. They always uh, did so using the catalog. I can still remember that somebody in a polunder with a lozenge pattern used the order of chapters to explain to me how a certain clamp system works because it had a reason why this one came first this one second and this is the thinking you need when you have people sitting there who say but i want to have four pages of clamps then um, two pages of industrial bosses and three pages of this and that this is far more difficult We've. Uh, I, I, I just had another idea, and uh, there goes my plan for this <laughs> talk. Well, one of the benefits, we said, um, with the complex data sets, innovative company, constantly new products, and uh, in some areas even more new products added than in others. Well, heretically asked. Since the, um, there are new products added constantly, I talked about the structural changes a minute ago in the catalog, so that the orders and sequences change. Hasn't this caused additional work because there's more dynamics in the catalog? Or would you have said that you've saved more time? We have definitely saved more effort. Uh, do you mean in, in pa page number? No, in terms of workload. I can see somebody with beaming, grinning, Peter, Peter, how much happier has your life become? Peter Atikon uh, sat with me and he was one uh, who suffered from manual setting. Because you no longer have this discussion what is to be shown in which order? There are clear rules that are agreed upon from the outset. And then there's no more discussion. Well, there's some space left on this page. Couldn't you actually feature this little detail on the right-hand side of the page? Yeah, there are people nodding. 
Well, let me repeat this uh, for the recording. Uh, Peter said uh, it was a, a main reduction of workload because uh, it was clearly defined what will be in and in which order. And the product managers or purchasing managers could not say, well, there's some space left, do it the other way around, because there, was a def there were defined rules from the outset. No, no, you were done. Yeah, I'm done. Um, um, maybe, if I may, let me add. I want, don't want to create the impression that you really have to squeeze yourself into a tight corset. There are only three rules and everything is rigid and I can only this and that way. No, um, I can uh, actually allow for any ex uh, exemption and define this as a rule. This involves a little more effort, so I have to define an additional rule that actually uh, turns exemptions into special rules. Then, of course, uh, uh, I have more effort uh, so the obstacle to do such a thing is uh, uh, higher than in the past, to where we just uh, pushed uh, uh, objects left or right to cover some white space. And now, for an editor, it is far more work to actually follow such exemption or special rules instead of just following the one rule. An additional benefit is when you actually proceed like this, then all new articles uh, uh, actually end up where you want to need them, uh, rules-based, so you don't have to do uh, more for new articles. Yeah, I, this just came to my mind. This is an educational technology. Yes, in part it is. It uh, de-incentivizes the creation of special cases. Of course, this is, um, this is fantastic. Um, yeah, yeah, because in most cases, uh, when you generate more effort or more work with, with work, uh, that wouldn't work. You have many products uh, with, and you started with a cool data quality. Yes, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> oh, no, I can compare. You really, you started with a cool data quality. No, um, there are companies uh, that I know that uh, would not achieve the same quality in a thousand years. But you have many attributes and actually um, put them into a hierarchy that we could use. But Horst, when you look at uh, uh, this, uh, many attributes for industrial products. So what are other segments or markets uh, um, that are suitable for facet catalogs? So what, in your view, is the target group for facet technology. Um, could, could you repeat a question, the uh, additional question, what's a facet at host? Uh, what is a facet catalog? Oh, good that you're asking. <laughs> the facet catalog is the best tool for checking the quality of your data. True, that's true. Every little piece of dust that you've pushed under the carpet, um, you will find it and there will be a heap of it and the heap is not fun. But when you actually have done away with the C by data manager, then you end up with a perfect data set. And the data set is not a means and it ends for a catalog, but improves every user experience across all digital channels. And this is why you have to think print digitally. Now, let me add before you continue. For years, I have been standing here telling people, if you start um, uh, judging things when they're on the page, then you're making a mistake. In that case, this is the exemption from the rule by saying, S uh, such a uh, de uh, design script, even a layout script, only means please get the facets out, uh, do the search jobs, and this is the product list. And since it is so easy to do, it is faster to, to pr draw up these documents. And then 
So it's still wrong for the pork belly, as we said before. But if it's about a technical catalog, then this um, uh, it makes it easier. The printed page, like uh, the German um, uh, football coach Rappertoni said, what is happening on uh, the pitch? Back back to your question. I think uh, I learned a new term and I like it so much. WK set uh, defines the range. Um, so there's a flyer, for instance, uh, for pork belly, and you know that the uh, uh, shopper wants a salad. You know that. But uh, you have uh, concluded a framework contract with a big uh, food wholesaler, VKZ, WKZ means advertising allowance. And they say if you now advertise our products uh, on a thousand pages a year, then you get a million worth in advertising allowance. Then, against better knowledge, um, they actually promote uh, some chocolate instead of the sell it, although they know that the shoppers don't want it, because they want to get this advertising allowance. I would say um, in WK set dominated advertising or printed matter, this uh, facet approach won't work. Or you can actually make it a rule. But this is not the master data approach of the attribute. No, no. Um, this type of uh, advertising materials wouldn't uh, be suitable uh, for uh, facet catalogs. So pork belly is always different. Well, I would say um, it always su is suitable for products that require lots of explanation. This is one criterion. We have both industrial customers and wholesalers that do faceting. Everyone uh, who um, sells uh, technically complex products and especially within a target group context, this is really crucial because Vago products uh, for a shipyard where there's lots of water involved, there are other security or safety standards, the Vago component have to work even when they're in touch with salty water, whereas in the automotive industry, when Vago clams uh, get into touch with water, then they long, no longer have to work because the car w would have uh, been in, would be in the river. Um, so uh, this is what I refer to when I say context related. This is definitely the right approach, the facet approach, when I have a target group oriented context. I would even exclude the cases where I wouldn't see the facet approach. For instance, if somebody can say all product is so unique that they neither share an attribute nor um, a same property. So the workshop idea. So no, no, not even that. Um, I have products that have no commonalities, no similarities. I don't know whether this exists. Uh, jewelry, for instance, high end. But they also share the same material characteristics, but you wouldn't facet this because you would actually compile them based on campaigns. No, let me contradict you. I would contradict this because... Um, when you actually uh, uh, want to communicate uh, um, with relevance to the uh, target group and knowing that they have a nickel allergy, then this could be a criterion that uh, a char characteristic that certain products share. There, I would, yes. Uh, uh, you don't uh, sell jewelry by s hierarchies. You, of course, sell uh, jewelry through emotions, but uh, maybe. And, and the representation. I'm with Arthur. If I do not have 10,000 different articles uh, that uh, are totally different, like a screw, a banana, or a tree, then it makes sense. I understand. If I have something that is identical, even a tiny item, 
let me repeat for the recording. When you have completely different products, screw banana tree. Hmm? Then, of course, it doesn't make sense. Although banana and trees are, uh, uh, are plants, so they share a characteristic. But I think a banana is a perennial rather than a tree. It's not a tree. <laughs> well, we've tried it out um, with the products uh, that are really specific for Vargo. We have very specific products um, and there are not too many versions and I was really afraid of the result. In the worst case, it's going to be the same effort involved, but measured without any optimization. Even there, we reach an improvement factor of six in terms of the objects we need to maintain. In the classical catalog, it would uh, actually be compiled during the planning, but the workload to define a facet is trivial. I simply enter the attribute, uh, the sorting order, and that's it. In a PIM system, when I actually compile the groups, this is, of course, different workload. Carolina has already started waving. Does this mean we have to start with a question or we have to be finished? We have a few more minutes. Will I, I w will actually present the uh, concluding speech. So um, we're on, the, and I won't miss this. So uh, we're on the safe side. When you hear this, then this is uh, really a plea for this being the new standard because there's hardly any cases that are exemptions. This is the argument. Uh, with, with there are too many exemptions from the rule. Well, even if I have many uh, exemptions, um, and uh, this refers to the last catalog, this is uh, made up of 90% uh, exemptions to the rule and 10% rules based. Again, there is a big benefit. Um, defining exemptions is uh, far easier than compiling everything individually. Um, in my experience, in my view, um, this does only not work for product that are in no way related and if I don't have any information uh, that helps me distinguish the products and this is this is a rare case unless it, it is cases um, where I d uh, deliberately want to avoid rules for good or bad reasons uh, I want to do this uh, for a new collection of dresses, for instance, by Beanie, Poblini, or whatever, and they are to be manually sorted. Then with the facets, I would actually say dresses, designers, and colors, and from there, I would actually go manually for good or bad reasons. Well, I, I would look to do it deliberately manually. Um, depending on what the range is, it can take more time to click through all of the facets instead of uh, searching for a Poplini dress. Another argument uh, uh, refers to two uh, answers. We don't need any target group specific communication, for instance, then you don't need it. And the second criterion that I always inquire about uh, in with our industrial customers. Uh, in the industrial pitches is where we pitch ourselves. Uh, we always say there are two ways. These are the benefits, these are the drawbacks. And you can do both with the print suite. It's unique. But uh, one essential point is it requires a perfect data quality. And if you don't have the internal resources, even if you so wish, wanting is not enough. Yeah, he always tried hard. No, it wouldn't work. You have to do it. And if the organization says, we don't have the resources, we don't have the people with the awareness, we don't have the time uh, to actually bring the data quality to this level, then please stay away from this project. And uh, selling you my shop, where companies like Lauda, they have a content services department and they help you out with um, articles where you don't have to be an engineer. We could take on an engineer, but um, so uh, you don't 
have to look at these complex uh, data management yourself. So you can actually get support for this bread and butter business. And this is still uh, cheaper than um, taking on new people or getting stuck in the project. Uh, if you say there's a benefit in it for us, then go for it. We'll, we'll have a look at this topic again. Welcome. Oh no. If there are too many, th there are many ver various catalogs that you can draw up with this. So you basically have one catalog managed by the ca content system. And uh, what about the manual finishing? Are the facet catalogs done? Are they ready? Or do you still do manual finishing with each facet catalog that you've produced? With us, they are final. Um, uh, the yardstick, this was the yardstick that I applied from the outset. If we go for it, then nobody will do um, manual finishing. This is a fully automatic system. You just put your button, have the catalog uh, generated. To answer your unmentioned uh, question, if you want to do manual finishing with a stopper, with an image or whatever, when you're familiar with the commit, then you simply add them manually. You add it to the commit group and then you can also do manual finishing. But uh, but with all of the clients who use it now, they're all going for fully automatic systems. If it's not a fully automatic system, then the, uh, the, the sales claim no longer applies. Well, I create three rules and I copy two of them and I'm done in one hour. Well, you've realized it takes an hour and 30 minutes. We all know that. But this, this uh, sales claim or selling claim, when you do manual finishing, the no longer holds true. If you say we don't want to have 10 versions, but instead 500 versions, and you don't manually finish 500 catalogs, answer second two. If you want to do disruptors or stopper pages, then plan it into the process. Define a rule when you have at least uh, five clams, then please this decorative element should be included at the end. Since this is so much easier, we remember the fully automatic systems uh, from yesteryear. This is at least one dimension uh, simpler. So if you really want to do this, you can do it. Um, you can actually hardly manage a more technical catalog than the Vago catalog. And it, it feels organic because I also think give some thought to how I build up the uh, tables, the use of uh, vignettes, of colors. Um, the beauty about it is that you can give some thought to the cool things rather than wasting time on the technical issues. Yeah, and data management. You don't have to focus on that. Oh, I hated it so much. I still remember the, when you clicked facets, uh, you, I heard words coming out of your mouth. <laughs> we're, um, uh, uh, we're uh, doing this now, we're improving this uh, in the next, uh, the first release, 24.1, uh, the print cloud, uh, our print cloud, and it will take a year or so, but print cloud will also get a print approach. We have to wait for another year. I have a question. I've understood the system, but when I have new clients, uh, and now I have an existing client uh, who already uh, uh, does big catalogs in with the existing system, if they're interested, uh, when I have the export earlier, then I have to adapt to the data model, or can I use the existing ones? You can, um, it really depends on uh, which content uh, system you have. Theoretically speaking, you can use the same print suite, and uh, it, once you've done an export structure, and uh, this is customizing, of course, then you can actually uh, additionally um, add the hierarchy of the export structure and assign it to all of the attributes uh, in the node. And then 
you can first do the faceting that uh, actually follows uh, the exact hierarchy of the export structure and then you've got the same export structure and then you can tell the client for your main catalog that has this export uh, structure you can still maintain it in PIN, uh, export it rules based and then the target group catalogs can be done with the other concept. Exactly. Comment off the mic. Uh, I already mentioned this um, in Gabby's and my uh, lecture. We're changing our wording too uh, of the release. You probably uh, heard this little break because I have to rethink it, uh, rethink it as well. 24.1 means uh, that it will be rolled out in the first quarter, hopefully in February next year. And the optimization will uh, actually arrive six months later. Well then, thank you very much for your attention. You must with come some horse. Und Leute, wenn wir jetzt äh, beschimpft werden, weil wir andere wa äh, haben warten lassen, das liegt natürlich nur an, äh, an ihm, ne? <lacht>